Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and I want to do a quick follow-up to my previous video on creating beautiful interior elevations. One of the things that's going to help you make those wonderful, quick, fast, beautiful in interior elevations is if you're using the interior elevation tool as opposed to the section or elevation tool to create your interior elevations. I know a lot of people don't use this tool because it has its quirks and can be a little confusing, but I've been using it for years, I love it, and I've been able to avoid or just not come across many of the issues that other people have dealt with. Um, if you have had issues, leave some comments and let's try and work them out together. But I want to run you through how I use the tool so you can start using it that way too. Um, first, there's a couple ways to use the interior elevation marker. I'm going to run through two quickly and then show you how I usually do it. One is to create uh, a solo marker. Here we're first going to look where it's going to look to and then this next is the cut. So this interior elevation marker, if we open it, it's cutting through the, through the window looking at the door. Um, the marker is not prettiest there, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to eyedropper this one and then we draw it, and it's going to look the way I want, but you've also, you also notice that it's the marker is looking the wrong way. It should be facing um, you know, to the right instead of the left. That might be because I've um, eyedroppered it, or that could be one of the quirks that we have to avoid. I don't typically use the interior elevation tool um, that way. Um, I instead use the for one, but I want to finish talking about the other weird ways it can be used. So you can also make a multiple, um, multi-sided marker. So now I'm tracing the edge of this room rather crudely, and you'll see I've created four interior elevation or five interior elevations, but the symbol is just a, a dumb circle. You can go and change it under marker uh, to individual for each your elevation and we can go and find a better um, marker to use. So now you know each one is looking there and each one's got its own little marker and if it wasn't the drawing ID it was a number um, it would look a little prettier so you could just say, say just so we make sure that works there. I have to go to marker and we'll turn that off. That work. Okay, there we go. So I turned those off, and so now we just see the markers. But again, that's that works. It's a little ungangly to have so many interior elevations. What would be nice is just to have this with five numbers, or six numbers, or seven numbers, instead of just the four. But that's one of the quirks with the interior elevation tool I can live with. Um, so basically what I do is I use the tool to create four or less interior elevations, and if I need more in a room, I do two markers, or and it's a case-by-case -case situation, what I want to do. But with a room like this, I wouldn't need this elevation and this elevation. I just need one elevation that covers both those walls. So let me delete that. I drop her that, and I'm going to create the marker for this room. So if you watch my other video, you know why I'm cutting it in the middle of the wall. I'm going to bring back. So that's the extents, and now we're putting where the sections are. First, I can go and I can take this section marker and I can move it back. I can move this one back to where I want it. I'll move this one up so it's cutting through the door. Move this one down so it's also cutting through the door. If for some reason um, I wanted it to jog, uh, you can do that if you clicked the section cut um, in the middle. Just like a section or, in, or elevation marker, you can break it and um, it always selects the wrong side. So you can move this, and so we can jog this elevation so we move this out of the way. So now this elevation is cutting like this. So maybe it's cutting through, say, this door, but I don't want to see it cut through that door there. So the marker is there, it's looking there, which is great. Um, a nice thing too, what I'll often do is I'll move the marker off to the side and then you know, do the old fashioned. Um, line with an arrowhead, make a circle, get the colors right, and so 
kind of do that classic, here's the dot line. We've done that all by hand in CAD. Um, the interior elevation markers, you know, this is manual, but it's, it's fast and easy to do. Now, if I, let's go back to where we just have that. Uh, if I didn't need all these interior elevations, I just needed three of them. Say, this one is meaningless. If you select the uh, perimeter of the marker, click on that, you'll see some different options. Um, first of all, I were to add a segment here, this marker is going to disappear, it's going to get a circle, so let's not do that. But if instead I go to uh, delete segment, now this interior elevation is just three-sided. This line is sort of still there because it, it defines the extent of the marker, um, but the marker is only showing, or the extent of the interior elevation tool, but the marker is only showing three. So likewise, we get down to two, uh, we can get down to you know, even one. Now, if you uh, add these back, um, I found that this marker will not display right. Um, these re-added um, points. In an earlier version of recording this video, I found that I couldn't get this to relink to the place drawing. So um, until one of us does more research to find out the way to get the interior elevation to re-recognize those views, um, it's best just not to um, add them back in, just start from scratch. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, if I go here and I delete this, delete that, it says, whoa, whoa, you're going you're gonna to be in trouble. So I delete that, I said, oops, I need to bring it back. Um, I could just undo, or I could go and bring that back in. If we go to the drawings, the placed views in the sheets, you'll see those are all nice, but my west elevation is uh, is unlinked. So I can go relink that and go back and choose the um, west elevation. So that's right now, but you'll see some weird things like west zone name elevation, like that's not showing up right. If we go back here, you know, it didn't update there. Something's quirky. I, there might be a solution. Um, within ARCHICAD, but this might be one of those examples of the interior elevation tool being a little wacky. So, in general, oh, I just, one second, I connected it to the wrong one, so maybe that is, that might be the issue, but I don't think so. Um, let's go back and link to, uh, it should be, it should be this one. So, okay, there, there at least it's right, but if we go back here, now it works magically. Okay. When I first did the video, that didn't work, and now it did. So scrap the last minute of this video. Um, you can just link them back in, and it works like magic and fine like it should. So I'm going to stop there. I hope this helps convince you to try the um, interior elevation tool in ARCHICAD and not doubt it as much. Even I, in this video, was doubting it. It turns out it wasn't broken like I thought it was going to be. So. Uh, Add some questions in the comments if you have them, and if not, um, thank you very much, and I'll get to recording some more videos and writing some more blog posts. Thanks.